Hey, welcome everyone to Yankee Stacking. I am so excited to have on with me one of my friends and an inspiration to me, the overtax taxpayer, or another overtax taxpayer, I should call him. So welcome. We're all, yeah, we're all <laughs> overtax taxpayers. That is so true. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm really excited about this. We, we talked about this for shoot, weeks, months, about doing a collaboration. Quite some together. time. Quite some time. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty jacked. I was telling the family, "This is Yankee." I guess who I'm going live? You know, or recording with tonight? And she's like, "Who?" Another overtax taxpayer. And she's like, "Wait a minute, weren't you watching him like years ago or something?" Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh man, it's so funny. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're gonna we're just gonna you know you know chill and, and talk about some cool yeah. stuff like stacking. Two and prep two and buddies stuff. just shooting the breeze. <laughs> and if you don't mind, every now and then I'll pick up the camera. And tilt it to my mm -hmm. stack. Your stack looks bigger. I'm showing some. It almost bling. looks like um, <laughs> scratch and smell. It looks like I can grab right through the screen and grab all that gold. <laughs> Wouldn't that be so cool? If I just reach go ahead, go ahead. Here comes, here comes his hand. Gold. This is your hand. Yo, reach out, reach out. <laughs> and then there's a like a mouse trap that snaps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh just... man, that is awesome! Hey man, we're gonna have fun uh, today. We're gonna talk yeah. about you know, like I said, stacking and prepping, and you know what, why we do what we do, and maybe even talk a little Bitcoin, and you can we can get in a little fight or whatever, and it's... <laughs> we'll have some fun, okay. awesome fun. I was just before we recorded, I was just admiring that blue hue colored twelve gauge behind you, man. Yeah, um, so that's, that's nice. my ambient lighting. I'm trying to go professional here yeah. with the. Uh, so it, it's it's a light that I bought at Home Depot, nice. and um, it, it's an LED light. But you, the good thing about it is you download an app and you can change it to whatever color you want. Oh yeah, that's so fun. it's really cool. My I, son, my know, son's got that upstairs with his gaming table and yeah. all that. So, <laughs> oh yeah, he loves so it. It's so funny. So when I talk about something dire like the world's coming to an end, I got like <laughs> the devil red behind. Me. Oh, you color <laughs> you you match the color with what topic you're talking about? The mood. <laughs> when you're like you know showing the showing the money, it's green, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. So all right. So yeah, let's uh let's dive in on this. Um, let's start out with you know just a little bit of background around stacking and uh, prepping your, your your journey, my journey, how we got started with this whole thing. I actually can't remember. I mean, I was watching your videos a long time ago, like some of your earliest ones, and I don't remember how you got started. So it was around 2008. Um, I had the. Uh, the evening shift at work and I at the time I was putting in something like 12 hour shifts we had 12 hour shifts and then we had like four day weekends it was crazy mm -hmm. I had a lot of free time on my hands and I uh I began to listen to conservative talk radio because mm -hmm. I got tired of the freaking repetition of just music so I started listening listening to conservative talk radio right. which educated me mm. Um, unbeknownst to me, I was always, I'm, I'm neither Republican nor Democrat, but I always mm -hmm. lean towards the conservative side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, I just felt such a, a drawing to, to some of those, uh, to some of those, uh, radio stations mm. It sent me on a journey. You know, I, I, uh, I started learning a little bit about politics then and and uh, opened up my eyes and then i i started browsing uh, subject matters on youtube which you, it's kind of like going down the rabbit hole mm -hmm. you, you find one you find another and then you slowly like a cigar when you first start smoking cigars you're trying them all and every now and then you grab one i like this one and i like that one pretty soon you have about four or five favorites yep. so i i found a, a few favorite uh youtube channels and um and they were prepper at the time. Prepping was big. There was so yeah. many prepping channels, and you, mm -hmm. they're really far between now. I mean, a few mm -hmm. of them, few still exist, like Southern Prepper and all those preppers. Right. And and the mix of the conservative talk radio, the fear mongering. I got to admit mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. fear mongering mm -hmm. some of these prepper channels put out. Sure. Started me prepping. I didn't know anything about silver at the time and silver didn't come 
till a few years later until I started delving, delving into uh, some of the uh, the newer prepping channels that were coming out. Some of the ones that advocated for not only preparing with guns, ammo, food, and, and whatnot, but financial. Mm -hmm. So that brought me into silver. And I don't think I bought my first ounce of silver until like um, 2008. What about you? What about you? Well, yeah, well, you and I are actually, I think you're roughly the same age as me. I mean, we, we both have a lot of... Uh... Yeah, of uh, um, years under our belts. Yeah, right? no, no, I agree. I'm, 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 I'm about ready. I agree with you. I'm about yeah. ready to turn seventeen. <laughs> and uh, you look it, man. You don't look a day over twenty. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think we're about seventeen, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. At least in the inside. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I had a background that was actually uh, probably familiar with a lot of stackers out there and that is coin collecting when i was a kid my grandfather was just a really great coin collector and he used to you know what kid when they're you know nine wants to hang around in, in grandparents house and just sit there and talk but he would look at me and say hey, hey, hey come here yankee and he'd bring me into his his office and there was like all these coins and he got a book out for me and started me down the you know penny collection and all that and i just thought it was so cool and it was really neat to have a grandfather that you know started me out like that but uh so my dad actually thing? got me into to um to uh silver or stacking if you want to call it they didn't call it stacking back in the 80s but um you know i was a teenager and he brought me to the mall and he was like telling me you know yankee guys you know th this is this is real money you know he'd be like this is real money <laughs> you know and so i was like okay dad you know i'm gonna buy a whole tube of you know mercury dimes because that's what he liked he liked the dimes right so we get at the mall, we'd buy them, and I still have the receipt or receipts to this day of my original purchases with my dad. So that was really cool. That actually, <laughs> that actually reminded me of my childhood. Mm. So my dad, he, he used to, not by hobby, he would just throw all his quarters and mm. dimes in a jar, keep okay. them in his dresser drawer or wherever. Uh, and like I said, it wasn't for the purpose of, I don't think he knew what silver was, but he was just one of those people that kept quarters and dimes. Right. I was a, I was a bad kid. I used to go and s steal those quarters oh, and dimes. Okay. Oh, confession time, man. Here we go. <laughs> you know, and, and try to kind of move the pile around so we couldn't tell. Couldn't tell, tell right. Because, yeah. And, cause, I, you know, I would go and blow it on stupid thing on things as a mm. kid, like yo-yos and candy. And, mm -hmm. but, but that dime that you just held up. Yeah. You know how many quarters and dimes I stole from him? That was probably ninety percent silver. Yep. Didn't have a clue and threw it all away on candy. Poor guy. <laughs> yeah, and I have to. My my dad got me into that uh, to to some degree. I mean, my grandfather gave me this. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these freaking things. It's like you put the quarters and dimes in there, and you plug it in, and it's like scale matter. You, it, you have a my you just went through a whole tube or a whole roll and my grandfather's like you could go through a whole roll on this just bring a ten dollar bill son down to you know the bank so as a kid i was a coin roll hunter on my bike i'd go down to the bank i'd get a hold of and it was a lot easier back then by the way to find some silver than it is now <laughs> but that was just you know it, it was just fun yeah. to do that. As yeah, a kid. back then there was so much of it, I guess, is yeah. what I was trying to say that didn't even know what it was. You back didn't know what I was. I was learning it just a little bit. I knew, you know, 1964 earlier. So I, 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 I had some education. I you know, give that to my my grandfather and father. So I owe it to them. That's there. awesome. That's awesome. I, you know, but when you turn into an adult and you get married and have kids and all that stuff, you, you, you get, I got, you know, enamored with the markets and really poured into that you know max my 401k out i was all about you know this is back before etfs actually i was about mutual funds and stocks and bonds and i was that was the way it was at and you know after it it took all the way to 2008 very similar to you global financial crisis right mm-hmm and uh, 2009, I had it. I had a long, you know, conversation with my wife. And I said, you know, this is going to go bad. I want to take a chunk of my money and I want to buy gold. 
well, she's like, wait, what? What? <laughs> I said, I want to buy gold. And, and so I'm like, she... yeah. <laughs> you can imagine. She's like, what are you talking? I said, trust me on this one. She, you know, I, I married up. She's a phenomenal wife. And that's Mrs. awesome. Mrs. Yankee's like, you think that's best to do? I support you in it. So I actually bought this. It was a tube of one ounce American gold eagles, 20 of them. And it was a, <laughs> I call it the Yankee cannon because it's just, you know, for fun. But that was a big deal to me. That was my yeah. first real, real getting serious about the stacking piece. But I started with that, really, 2009. That's what the date is, 2009. That's freaking awesome. That, 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 it's a, awesome. that was hard, man. Do you really, that was really hard. I, gold was like $1,000 an ounce back then, but that was hard. <laughs> a lot of uh, a lot of saving to try to do that, but uh, and I remember how freaking scared I was coming out of the coin shop. Well, now each each <laughs> one of those coins, each one of those coins in that tube oh, are approximately seven hundred dollars more than. Well, dude, what you purchased them. True, for. but I did ride it up to uh, almost two thousand dollars an ounce that first wave, right? And then I rode it all the way down. We're going to talk about that because I I buy silver and gold. And I never sell it. I've never sold an ounce either. Good for you, man. Now I got to be careful here. I did. I do tiny, tiny bits of selling just to flip, just that little bit. But no, I, that is to keep for other reasons. So right. Yep. Absolutely. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But you know, that was really my first, uh, my first step into it. And and then at, around that time, I also got into the whole prepping thing. Now I'm. Not a, I'm can I clarify this? I'm not a doomsday prepper. All right. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a bunker in the backyard. Uh, I don't feel things are gonna just. Yeah. I, did you, was that a radiation uh, sign on the wall that you just? Actually, yeah. There you go. Fallout so shelter. That is there you go. A real one. That, that is that's a real a one. Real one that came out of a nuclear plant. Sweet. So here we have the Titan Missile Museum. So you can look it up. That it's here so it's on cool. Titan Missile Museum. Oh, and I wanna go. That came out of another. Uh, that came out of another uh, nuclear facility, and they were selling them. So yes, that's metal. It's yeah. actually. Uh, it's uh, if you that's shine cool. a light on it, it has that that, that reflectiveness. Yes, yeah, that's so, cool. So I was just. I don't. Sweet. You know, I love collecting little things like that. So I just brought out a few things. But here. dude, oh, here we go, bling time. We're gonna have fun. I want to show. I want. Yeah. I want to show some stuff, and I want you to too. But, I mean, you're not a. When I say a doomsday prepper, you know, you, I th I think of it more as like I'm a practical prepper. Right. So. You I know wanna, what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I want to build upon that. Um, Please. There's a lot of people that, um, and I think the television series Doomsday Prepper yes. Yes. gave preppers a uh, a bad name. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm not a doomsday prepper. I don't believe Good. that planet new brew, some <laughs> crazy crap is going to happen tomorrow. I don't believe uh, in many things that uh, you'll hear a doomsday prepper talk no about. No zombie apocalypse? Uh, no, I kind of wish it would. It'd be fun, actually, I think. <laughs> you grab that 12 gauge and have some fun, wouldn't you? You'd be able to outrun them, right? Yeah, I, mean, I know. You'd be able to outrun them. Unless I you can, come dude, across the zombies that can sprint. I, I can. Like oh, that. I know, right? Oh, man, those that's the whole different ball of wax right there. But I can totally see you with a melee weapon. I don't know so, why, man. <laughs> I, I so don't anyways. believe in a lot of the apocalyptic stuff okay. that, that preppers have been... Um, demonized with right i do believe in a financial type of an emergency coming and i think what throws well, even a, a natural of... disaster could potentially happen right pandemic absolutely or something like that yep. absolutely yep. absolutely hey here's a question for you did you have any n95 masks before this whole thing went down so um yes i did me too I had some, and then my wife got a hold of them oh, and no. was using them for her arts and crafts. You know, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> God bless her. It's okay. Oh, you'd be like, but wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Just in case. But you, that, that's what I'm talking about. See, that's, to me, I had them years ago, right? And yeah. to me, it was just like, that's a practical thing to do. Your Berkey, your, your, your food preps, all those things, 
I mean, shoot, man, the, the federal government asks us to do that, right? Right. So that's the type of thing that, you know, I, I don't know if it's just a, a misrepresentation or people not understanding it, but that's the type of prepper I am. Yeah, I think everybody's a prepper. You know, yeah, you, you live in a prepared. cold environment. Right. You put on a jacket before you go out. <laughs> you're preparing. You're prepping. See, oh, uh, so, I um, and I think, uh, I think, I think what happened in the stores mm -hmm, uh, in mm -hmm. the beginning of this COVID nineteen. Right. I've been saying it for years. If something happened, right. you'd have about two days, three days worth of food on the shelves. Sure. And when this COVID nineteen came upon us, um. Damn if it didn't happen. Excuse mm -hmm. my language. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. three, four about days. That, huh? Three or four days, and those shells are wiped out. It, I it, even took video and posted it. I saw that. Um, this is a, I, this think, is a this is a, a wake up call, right? I think it was to many of the naysayers. Mm. Um, I didn't even need stuff, and I would go into the store just to get a um, a barometer of what was going on in the community here. Mm -hmm. So and I would walk up and down, you know, if I saw a can of soup or something, yeah, I threw it in the cart or something. Right. But uh, I think a lot of people woke up to prepping now. Um, to what degree? I don't know. I think um, it's happening. But, you know, I, I'm going to tell I'm, right now, this is when I'm going to make you embarrassed because you were instrumental in sensitizing me to this in many ways, both for um, prepping and stacking. You're one of the... Uh, seminal channels that I watched. I was telling you before we started this, dude. I was outside. I'd be mowing in the middle of you know July or whatever, and back in 2018. And once it was done, I'd lay down on my hammock under the shade and pull out my phone and go to YouTube and pull up another overtaxed taxpayer. I'd be listening to, and you'd be like, "Do you see? Do you see? This is an American silver eagle. Isn't it beautiful? This is one ounce." of 999 fine so i mean you were just you you still are you're great it just kind of like had this just this 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 comfort level you, you engage with people i was mesmerized glued to what you were saying and i really that enjoyed so it awesome. that's and so awesome quite frankly i also thought you were like you were the man for showing your face on youtube of course you can you know, see i'm not I, doing I that. that i got a lot of beef for that i Did got you? a lot of beef for showing silver like you do gold oh. like you do. Oh, you shouldn't show your stack yeah. i get a comment like that once once a week once a, well yeah but and i'm it, like yeah i don't know where you are any more than you know where i am you know what i'm saying no i it's know like, and i've met up people at coin shops and so forth and in face to face so I, I i get that it's just well, I made a promise to Mrs. Yankee when I did this channel, I'd keep it anonymous. So, yeah, and I, uh, I had to make a promise or two to my wife too that yeah. I wouldn't, uh, you know, bring her in on it or speak sure. about her. And then I understand exactly where your wife is coming from. I wanted to make yeah. one more point about prepping. Though. Yeah, go ahead. So, I think also not only was preppers being demonized, mm -hmm. but when you tell people something is gonna happen mm -hmm. in their minds they're expecting it to occur like a light switch switched on boom i just woke up the world's in an economic collapse right and and when that doesn't occur to them they lose faith in the in the precious metals i'm pointing at the precious metals sure. they lose faith in 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 prepping mm -hmm. i don't think they understand it's like um Boiling a lobster. <laughs> it happens very slow and incremental. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Almost understand? imperceptibly. You don't even know you're cooking. Yeah. So, and I want people who are listening to this uh, and, and thinking about prepping or even for that matter, thinking about quit, quitting. Mm. It doesn't happen like it does in a movie. You don't go to sleep one day and the next morning you turn on your favorite news channel and there's calamity all around. It's gonna. It happens slowly and incrementally. True, but sometimes it, it happens almost imperceptibly until it happens, and then when it yeah. does trigger, it's amazing. Like we saw, right? I mean, it doesn't take long. Uh, not many meals. What's the what's the uh, famous quote? Is it four days until four four missed meals until anarchy? It doesn't take long for things to spiral out of control. I know I'm misquoting that, but anyways, the point is. You take away food from people, water, you know, basic necessities, it can get bad quick, but we don't notice it. 
and we get complacent, right? The whole right. normalcy bias. We have this bias that things are, yeah, they're going to stay the same. They've always been this way. Yeah. yeah blah, blah, blah. And then boom. I hear you. I hear you. Oh, man. So anyways, I, yeah. So that was my journey. I mean, basically, you inspired me really to start stacking Thank too. You. And to start my YouTube channel, which I started almost uh, just short of two years ago now. So really, I credit a lot of this to you. All right. So taken off your channel is taken off. Tremendous. Well, well, thank you. But, uh, you know, it's it's I, I watch your style. You also have a great way of, of just you know, telling a good story and, and being real. I think people can tell really quick if yeah. you're fake. Right. And yeah. You are not fake. <laughs> you are as real as they get. I, uh, I it, it and, and and this leads Remember, we were joking a mm. around about how I feel in front of the camera, and 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 you're like, you seem so smooth over text, yeah, you're and relaxed. I, I and I, I said, hold on, let's save this for the video. I might seem so smooth. Mm. So, for example, my rides to work when I do morning ride to work. Oh, I love those. Yeah. So you know how many times I have to stop the camera, start all over about four times. Come on. And about the and, and then the fifth time takes, but on the fourth time I'm cussing at myself. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. I got to I gotta hold those and just make a collage. You should. Of all my mistakes. Oh yes, absolutely. That would be hilarious. <laughs> so a lot of people they're very polished and, and um, they yeah. they take a lot of uh, they take a lot of uh, time uh, scripting and everything. I just feel like talking about something and I say it. You see, that's it has the point. its downsides say it. too. I misquote sometimes or I mispronounce sometimes. Um, but that but, also, but that, wait a minute, that also shows how real you are. You just say, yeah. I don't know, I'm saying that wrong. Whatever. And it's not like you have to have it all edited perfectly. So that's awesome. Right. I, I like to I talk to people it. like they're just sitting across the table from me. Mm. I, that's why I watched you, you know, and, and, and the prepping piece, you know, I, I looked at what you were doing um, and, and just kind of, I didn't, oh, maybe I stole that. I don't know. I, I modeled a lot of what you were doing around my channel too. I, I, um, I created a playlist called uh, what I call Prepping the Yankee Way. And I put in different episodes of prepping to help, you know, the newbies. And, and you know, that, that was a, you know, uh, a big step for me too to share, uh, you know, the prepping aspect of it. Actually, <laughs> um, you mentioned Hollywood and Doomsday Preppers. Did you know that a Hollywood studio actually watched my Prepping the Yankee Way playlist? I did not know that. That <laughs> should be an honor. They actually reached out to me and asked me to do a reality show. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. I can see that smirk on your face. Like, wait a minute. Well, they did. I did. Bucks off of it. Well, la it was, yeah, but you see, I'd have to show my face most likely. Yeah, so I've had to wrestle with that. The whole family did. I did a couple, um, um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, you know, uh, 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 casting call, I guess you can call it. I did a couple videos. I sat across the table from them virtually, the two producers. They went through it and they uh, said, we're, we're building this, you know, reality show and prepping. And they gave me the premise. I was like, holy crap. So, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. You know, the whole medical crisis thing kind of. So was this recently, or this yeah, was... the end of last year? Okay, so you're saying there's still a chance they could uh, call you? Yeah, they said they 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 would. They've got the team together, blah blah blah, and they just had to put it on hold. Nothing's going on, I guess. For I just thought of something there. funny. What? I need to send you a note. I need to send you an overtax taxpayer shirt to wear on your first episode. <gasps> Boom! There it is, man. <laughs> Throw me a bone. <laughs> you send you send it. I'll I'll wear it. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Um, if I had to make a guess, they're looking for somebody that's controversial. Hmm. Controversial. Um, you're very normal. <laughs> So Tell my I'll wife that, or my kids. No, they, they actually like the financial aspect. So I was able to walk them through. I had like three different preps outside. I walked one, my, my poor, my son was like walking around with the, with the phone live and they're recording it. And I was like showing them the different preps for water and food and other types of stuff. And then I talked to them about the financial aspect, the dangers and how we need to be prepped. And, and they were like, whoa. See, they were looking for like different, strengths you know i'm not you know 
some survivalist or something. So they, they wanted a team to be able to go and test people's preps all around the world. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I don't know. They, well, I'm Good perfectly fine. You. I'm perfectly fine never doing that. My life is still complete without it. So, <laughs> but it was pretty, it was a hoot <laughs> to do it. That's awesome. So anyway, so, but I credit a lot of that, the whole prepping thing to some of the stuff that you did and watched on your channel. So I appreciate it. So we talked okay. a little bit about our journeys, how we get going on this whole thing. Um, how about your, your, your approach to the whole stacking? Let's just, let's take stacking like gold and silver and, and why do you stack? What's your strategy? So <clears throat> for me, it's quite simple. When I have some extra money, <laughs> you're I, I'm, and you, you yeah. one would think it's funny, but it, it, it's saving money is, is one of the hardest things a family mm. can do. There's always bills that need to be paid. There's always um, more important things that need to be done with your fiat currency. Right. And by the time you retire, it's too late. Game over. Mm-hmm. You either got it by then mm-hmm. or game over. So I, I come from the uh, mythology. I come from the, uh, the perspective that anytime I get anything mm-hmm. that I, any kind of extra money, I put it away. Um, and sometimes, yes, I feel that the, I feel that my savings is sometimes, I got to be very careful how I say that yep. sometimes more important than some of the bills I have to pay. See the bills I can get caught up with while mm-hmm. I'm still young, but when I'm old, there's no catching up on savings. So mm-hmm. I'm not like some of these big YouTube channels where I have a, a big budget and I can mm-hmm. just easily purchase silver or mm-hmm. gold for that matter anytime I can. I'm struggling to put savings away for my, my wife and I for when we're older. Right. I uh, Obviously, I buy when it's low and, and, and I haven't sold anything very much yeah. like you. I yeah. have not ever sold wow. one lousy ounce. Whew. Not since uh, since my first, you beat me uh-huh. on that. I, What's I sense, that? Uh, you've beaten me on that. I I have flipped a few things, like. But know, it sounds like but, you flipped yeah. them for a profit, which I, is yes. not actually spending the money. Yeah, it's but dirt. okay, so yeah, I I like to buy my silver <laughs> and gold, not as an investment, nor at least not in a traditional sense. I don't look at this as an investment. I look at it as insurance. Um, you know, inflation insurance or hyperinflation insurance. It it is insurance for the wealth that I currently have and how to preserve it, right? I don't look at it as a a great way to build my wealth. You know what I'm saying? I know some people do and they do a much better job of it than I do. I mean, they they buy up a whole bunch and flip it and they make a profit. I, I just don't see that as effective that capital appreciation right now I, and it and to me that is not what it's about it's not about um investing sort of if you will it i mean seriously this this stuff doesn't doesn't yield up you know it doesn't uh cash flow it's just it just sits there right you know and right. but but it preserves its its um uh, buying power its value right. so that's how i approach it so and i agree with you i don't think i'll ever get rich off of my precious metals there you go however it is something that sits there it's actually i'm a and i think i mentioned this before i love going to best buy i love mm-hmm. buying I'm a, I'm a guy you know i love the pretty <laughs> blinking lights and uh-huh. the, you know so this stays in the safe it's difficult to to spend on like a debit card mm-hmm. it it's for savings it, it's forced right. savings, right it, it's yep. a savings account that mm-hmm. has a higher in my personal belief mm-hmm. It has a higher interest rate than a standard savings oh, account at go. the bank. It was at yeah. sitting at right around fourteen dollars and change. Mm-hmm. What six seven months ago, mm-hmm. and now it's what is it worth now? An ounce. So it has a Appreciate higher it. interest yep. rate, and I'm 
I prefer this savings account versus their savings account. Oh my word! I, I've, <laughs> I don't I've, think it'll make me rich. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, we could go off on a tangent on banks. I tell people to take their savings out of the bank. I say, be the bank, be your own bank. Yeah, leave some in there for you know like emergencies or or better yet for for convenience like paying the bills and all that. But your <laughs> savings, what what is it buying you in there? No, practically nothing. So my fiat, I, I try to get the savings piece out of there, but you know that's a whole risk reward type thing. If the reward was greater, putting it in the bank, sure. But it, shoot, man, if we're it's it's negative right now in real terms. Our, our right. interest rates is negative, and soon I think it's going to be in 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 actual terms, it's going to go negative. We're actually doing them a favor oh, by us letting them hold our money. Think of it. It's so yeah. we're making them rich. It's and, crazy. Um, it's a very mm -hmm. vampiristic system. Mm -hmm. This whole, mm -hmm. this system of of, of debt. Mm -hmm. um, you want something, and then you have to pay back much more than what you buy. It's a very vampiristic system. Yeah, you know, it's it, the if banksters. You really, it, it's it, it, the yeah. The banksters have uh, have us right where they I want mean, us. If you really took a look at our homes, really material wise mm -hmm. and. And labor-wise, really, what is the house worth? Mm -hmm. Yet, we're on these 30-year mortgages, compounded interest, or whatever, mm -hmm. however they calculate the interest. And you done spend three times or two times the, the, the home's value, and so, if you're lucky. Yep. You know, by the time you're finished with your mortgage. Very vampiristic right. uh, system. Yeah. The whole financial system, I think. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I want to talk about that. I want to talk about where you think we're going economically, but... Before I do, I my strategy just from a from a and, you know, stacking standpoint is is I I have to keep things simple because if I don't I'm I'm getting old and I'm, I'll start you know drifting off and buying stuff that I probably shouldn't buy, but I I called it the you know stacking the Yankee way and, and it's basically three things that I like to focus on and I think you you I got it probably from you right constitutional right or junk mm -hmm. as people call it government minted silver bullion like american silver eagles like you kept talking about for for such a long time and then gold of course i started right. with gold but also the fractional stuff mm -hmm. so i've been focusing on canadian maple leaf so that's it three things by the oh, way what size, each... are those, oh, what size are those what size those capsules these, these are these are quarter ounce i don't no. go anything short of a quarter ounce i take my time because you know what roughly one of these costs about this Right. Well, which size is the capsules? Oh, I don't. Oh, millimeter, millimeter, you mean? Yeah, I need to get oh, some. Of those I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. In fact, I think I might have a link uh, in the description of my videos okay. for these capsules. But yeah, those I, are sweet. Yeah. To how you got the foam rubber around I, them. And yeah, some people like that. Some people don't. Whatever. I started that way, so I decided to keep it that way. But looks like candy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm stacking it, trying to get a maple musket, as I call it. <laughs> but, <laughs> 25 I, mean, I think I'm going to go for but so anyways this that's it man I don't I keep it simple I don't do bars a whole lot for a variety of reasons mostly from why you know it comes from my dad and the whole trust and in 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 of bars versus coinage where we we actually tend to trust round things more and you know American uh, silver eagles that's my main focus that that's those those my strategies because I'm what I call a prepper stacker. There's three kinds of stackers. Cause again, I, I can't have like 15, I'll forget them. <laughs> uh, a prepper stacker, a collector stacker, and a flipper stacker. I'm, I'm the first one, right? The prepper stacker is about, you know, being prepared for, I don't know, whatever, finan financial crisis or, or, or your retirement, you're preparing for something, right? Yes. Collectors. They love the bling, dude. They get all this fancy stuff, which, you know, occasionally I'll get just because they're what I call silver ice cream cones. They're they're fun. That's my favorite yeah. ice cream, by the way. Yeah. Black raspberry. Um, but yeah, I don't buy a lot of this stuff. I can't. It's like if I had a steady diet of that, I, it's just like if I had a steady diet of that, I'd be 320 pounds. If I had a steady diet of this stuff, I'd be wasting my money with the high premiums. I just think it's it, that that I reward myself with occasionally, right? So I, I, I try not to do that. That's a collector stacker, though. They don't care. They don't care about premiums. They just want the beauty. They collect series, right? You know, they get all the latest whatever and all that. I'm not that. Yeah, you love way. those. Yeah, the booty. 
You love yeah. calling out the booty, right? Yeah. Pirate, <laughs> pirate booty. Pirate, pirate so booty. In the same way, you know, um, I, I stack a, a, most of my stack. I would say ninety-five percent of my stack is um, Eagles. Yep. Uh, can I see? I got about four percent in 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 maple leaves. Can Can you switch your camera while you're saying this? Sure. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I I, I only brought a, out a little bit. Of course. Let me oh, see yeah. if I can light this light up a little bit. So. Oh, neat. I, I uh. No, oh, this brings back memories. <laughs> what is that? That's a U.S. Army gold coin. I mean, silver coin. That's pretty. Yeah. Wow. I love how official it looks. Yeah. Little, little gold there. Oh, I don't yeah. have much in the way of gold, but I never was a fan of rounds. But lately, yeah. rounds, over the right. last few years, there's some very artistic yeah. rounds that are coming out. Yeah, and that's fun stuff. So uh, I'm, I got I'm this like for my you. son. He, he, I'm he, like you. I, you got the I Marvel series, the right? Premium. Right, that's a nice one. Or, or the, you know, you just love Star Wars. But again, these rounds, that's not my primary focus, right? No. I do flip them, though, occasionally. Like right? this guy, this is the first one that came out. I've sold a few of these. Oh, look at that. We got pirate pirate coins up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but my point oh. is the last the last piece was the flipper. Because I know there are a lot of people out there that flip and do pretty well at it. And I've only dabbled in that. I mean, I sold a few things for profit, but that's not me. I'm not a big flipper. The premium is too high. It's the um, risky thing too, right? I don't know. You, you might buy something thinking, oh, everyone's going to want this. And they don't. Right. So to me, it's like a piece of art. You, mm -hmm. you like it, you buy it. If not, and I don't buy a whole tube of the same round. I really don't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. one thing I'll get promise, one or two. Yep. Yeah. So I've been buying a few Disney coins for mm -hmm. my wife. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. So what we're going to do is very much like, there's some more silver up there. I don't know if you can see it on top of the uh, radiation sign. We're going to get like a um, oh, a, a, a shadow box. Yeah, and we're going to yeah. put a bunch of collectible coins in there. Uh, the Disney collection, she likes those and sort of, that sort of thing. I am um, doing one other thing that I do that's really not stacking, and, and it's inside this thing too. It's um, um, uh, yeah, some really high quality, um, like you know, the best I can get of a certain style, right? And this is for my son, which hopefully he doesn't hear me say this. It is uh, what I call the Yankee uh, uh, Constitutional Silver Series, and it's for him. This is that's a, awesome, you know, and and one day I hope. When he sees these special, you know, this is a gorgeous standing uh, Liberty, but these are, are, I want one from every a barber. I want one from every denomination, the best I can afford they're, they're to nice. remember and put it in a box. Like you were saying, a shadow box or something to display. Yeah. So that, I think it's important. That's, you know, yeah, I like remember. how you're doing this you're, um, because I, I think I've heard you speaking with your son on mm -hmm. live chats before. Yes. Am I correct? Yeah. Little Stacks joins me occasionally. Yeah, Easy. so yeah. there's a point to that. Yeah. You know, you got a lot of people who have um, rare coins. They mm -hmm. have whatever they have. Mm -hmm. They pass away, and then their their children who don't know nothing about it, <laughs> all they see is money. Yep. They take it to a coin shop mm -hmm. or a pawn shop. Mm -hmm. They give them 25% of the spot, and they think they got a good deal, and they walk off and they blow it on a party or something. Amazing. What I love about how you're doing this, you're teaching your children what it is. So mm -hmm. that way, when your son has to uh, sell it, God forbid, mm -hmm. he at least knows to at, you know to look at spot price and see right. where, where it's sitting at first, you know? Yes. So yes. I, I really have a yep. problem with people just leaving their stuff to their children and not explaining yep. I've done it with all my kids. I've explained the real value of money and how it's changed. In fact, I was just talking to my daughter just today about it down after mm -hmm. lunch. I mean, it was just really nice to have her actually ask me questions. Because, you know, when you're a teen, yeah, it depends. I mean, yes, there are teen stackers in our in our midst that I'm like, oh, my word, that's awesome. 
But most, most youth are not interested in preserving wealth. Shoot, they're trying to make it. You know, maybe they have the Robinhood app on their phone or something, and that maybe interests them. <laughs> maybe right. they're going to buy, you know, bankrupt Hertz or something. But <laughs> it's not about precious metals for most young no. people. No, I, I don't think so. But I do feel that our community is growing. Oh, I really it's do. It's growing incredibly large now. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I get emails from, can I say it, teenagers. Yes. You know, I hey, I got my first... I'm 15. I just bought my first tube of American Silver Eagles. Oh my God, are you yeah, kidding? Freaking, can you? I, mean, just I, would, I didn't do that much. at 15. I affected somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> not infected. you have. Yeah, not you have, infected. Yeah. I affected. <laughs> Glad you made that clear. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's a good oh, feeling. Man. It truly is. It really is that um, you change somebody's life you know, even that much. See, as a, you know, thinking back to the prepper in me too, it's one of the reasons why I picked those three things because I, and I don't know if you agree with this uh, overtax, but to me, this is going to make good barter material potentially one day. Well, I was looking at that tube of gold. Barter. Can you imagine one day you walk into a bank, you hand them the tube of gold. I like to pay off my house. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I don't think. But yeah, you, you could. You could. Yeah, absolutely. You could. You never know. No, but as a prepper stacker, my goal is to not sell this, but to use it potentially as barter and trade. I truly believe that we could have an SHTF situation where while people honestly don't know what this is, and I did a video once where I tried to buy a uh, a pound of coffee with this and the lady who took it and she's like what is this you know and the manager came over it was hilarious you know but nobody really knows what this is nobody understands a 1964 kennedy is worth far more than 50 cents yet yet one day its potential for educating people is there i think under certain circumstances People are going to learn quickly what that is, and it's going to actually be something that we could trade and barter for. Right. So that's the type of, and in gold, yeah, that's a tougher one because of the value, but I think of this as potential barter material for silver. So, you know, that, that's how I approach this. Uh, I don't really look at it as a and is an investment and I'm not selling it. I'm just keeping it and I'll pass it on to my kids. If we can go another, what, uh, 30, 40 years without everything going to hell in a handbasket? Yeah, I mean, the way the world's <laughs> going nowadays, you know, this might even become illegal. <laughs> Wait, depends yeah, I, 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 it could be on the black market. I don't think though, I mean, come on. I have to argue this with some people too. When cool. this was declared illegal back in 33, People were walking around with this stuff in their pockets. We had our money backed by it. It was the only way to really reel in people's wealth. Now, no one has that stuff. It doesn't back crap. And there are dozens of ways that the government can steal our money a lot easier electronically than doing a confiscation which technically as you've said in the past is not a confiscation there were no doors being kicked down I, I just don't see the likelihood of another confiscation yeah confiscation. so a lot of people i get emails you know this can you're wasting your time it yeah. could be illegal every you know you never know it can be made illegal and i joke about it yeah. uh, a minute or two before but it was illegal but nobody came i know knocking on your door, right. demanding that you hand over all your gold and silver. It never, ever happened. And it people was had never it. a confiscation. No, there was never a true confiscation. You're right. It was voluntary. But remember, everybody had it. Right. Relatively speaking, nobody has it now. No. It's not worth their time and effort. They'll take your 401ks. They'll, take, they'll do a bank bail-in. They'll take your IRAs. They're going to go after the stuff that is easy to get electronically before they'd ever think of going after a few easy, stackers. Easy pickings. Absolutely. Easy pickings. Um, a question for you. Do you um, buy rhodium or palladium or platinum or any of that other stuff or you used to stick with gold and silver? I just stick with uh, silver and just started really getting into the gold. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't even own, I'm looking at it right now. 
I'm looking at your stack. Oh, and I'm looking at my stack of gold. <laughs> I'm, take that I'm lucky here if I got three quarters of an ounce total gold. Let's. So that's I'm awesome. Kind of Do you really? When people say this, can I just say this? When people say, "Oh, Yankee, I only have X amount of blank." And that's I, fine. I go to them. I say, "Do you realize you have more than 99.999 percent of this population?" Right. Think of it that way. That's phenomenal. I encourage you I, that way. I attribute it to some of the people who email me. I only got mm. one ounce of silver, and I tell them, <laughs> next month you'll have another, and the month after that you'll have five. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way for me. I just started yeah. with the gold, really, per se. Um, I was fortunate enough, someone, uh, one or two people actually gifted me uh, a little bit of that. I but, saw that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna branch off. I think a little bit of the silver and mm -hmm. kind of move a little bit towards the gold now. Um, You're not alone in that. I mean, I'm I'm getting emails and talking with people on the phone in our community that, and I'm I'm, I'm actually dropping a video Monday on this topic mm -hmm. that are actually shifting from silver more to gold. And I started with gold. I'm blessed to have been able to do that, although it was a big sacrifice to do it. I don't have a lot of toys. <laughs> I, I, I live very frugally, but that was an investment that I thought was important of uh, you know putting my fiat towards. But there are people who are doing that. They're selling silver and converting more to gold. No, I, don't. I, I would never do that. I, I don't. I don't think you should either. I no, don't. because you're you're blowing that up premium. You bought the premium. Yes. You're just selling you will the lose. silver. You're gonna lose and the transaction. And now you have to take that, you know, yeah, hold on don't, to your silver. Yes, keep your silver. It's more speculative, I know, but keep it. You you and you you bought it. Just put it aside people, and get it's your. It's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like a bass fish. A lot of bass <sighs> fish will tell you that pound per pound, a bass fish is stronger than almost any other fish. Pound per pound, they're saying silver's the same way. Pound per pound, mm. they say silver will make more money than gold mm -hmm. they're saying silver can go up multitudes into the, into the three digits sure that's what that's quadruple even more than that that's what 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 is it now we'll just say five times we'll call it a hundred dollars 120 dollars five times what is it now 20 dollars just say 20 yeah but a lot of people do not believe an ounce of silver will flip five times so Pound for pound, they're saying silver is actually the better investment. A lot of people oh, are yep. that within 30 years, right. uh, an ounce of silver could be 150, 300 bucks. Not getting That's, rid of my silver, man. <laughs> I, I don't that know. has an upside I don't know potential. Speculation, no, no, we don't correct. know anything. We don't know for sure. But, you know, the way, and maybe we should transition now that we're talking about what's coming or potentially talk about our economy and what's happening. Because I'm really curious about your your take on on this. I mean, I, I have my own I, I have my own uh, prognostication just for fun. I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm curious to see where where do you see this stuff, the silver and the gold uh, in the next. Let, let, let's let's talk the decade. This decade of the 20s. Do we get out of this decade economically? unscathed no i don't believe so mm. i do not believe so i'm sorry to say um and i think it's it has something more to do with what's going on politically and again social, I said and this socially early. too yeah societally again, yep. Yep. i don't want to beat up anybody that's listening to to us you know because we i have a, a lot of uh i have a lot of democrat fans and mm -hmm. friends mm -hmm. and just as i have republicans so i don't right. want to get anybody angry right. but i said it before i'm neither democrat nor republican but can I, can I just tell you things. that okay i tell you i'm not either i'm independent yeah, yeah. i see but things that are just troubling me mm -hmm. i see our freedoms being taken away mm -hmm. you know so this, like you said, might just all be a bartering tool just to freaking mm -hmm. get a next day meal. I mean, if you look around what happened during World War II, I mean, it was horrible. And, and they were just barely able to eat. And I see things that are going on, on television today that that they're claiming is normal. It's not normal. And, right. Um, right. you know, uh, isn't uh, it amazing what we've seen in the 20s, like yeah. 2020? 
Think about this. It's 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 unbelievable. I told my family we were talking about that. I said, medically, politically, socially, economically, we are we are in a uh, we're in a, 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 a seizure. We are in we're having a seizure as a nation. I, I think globally too, but I'm thinking too about our wonderful nation, which you know, dude, I am as patriotic as as anyone I know. I love my country so much, and it just Amen. eats me alive inside that of what I am seeing happening to our nation. It's killing yeah. me. And a lot of it is is downright. Um, it is uh, this evilness is being propagated by the news media outlets who who are perpetuating it, who are mm-hmm. who are uh, trying to make people believe one way when it's mm-hmm. really not and, and unfortunately most people are getting their education from i won't say well wow. they get it they're fa- getting their- online they, they get it through snapchat and youtube and and, and facebook right. and others <laughs> that's where they're getting a lot of it right right and mm. they're too lazy to actually read a full article nowadays nowadays they just read the headlines yep. and they think that's all the news they need to yep to uh to obtain but Dude, you know, I, I'm just amazed that we we are able to kick the can just a little bit higher after what we've gone through. And and I, I, I dropped a, a, a video about a week or two ago about the second wave that I do believe is coming. Not so much the medical second wave, though, the economic one, the actual implications of what we are doing, what the Fed is doing, what the government is doing. And I think we are going, we, this is just the beginning. In fact, we're not even through the first wave economically, but that second wave of bankruptcies and bank failures and all the stuff that I see coming and the unemployment, we are really in for it. I, I don't. We're not getting out of this. Everyone thinks, oh, okay, everything's fine, everything's fine, everything is awesome. Uh-uh, it's not. Kind of, let, kind of leads me to your question you just asked two minutes ago. You think we're going to get out of this unscathed? No, I don't. I think there's a... Uh... I got to say this, I'm not saying that the Corona is fake, I'm not saying that. Nope, it's not. I have good friends of mine that are suffering from it. First hand knowledge. It is not fake. But However, <laughs> I'm not seeing nobody. I know yeah, you're right. not right. Exactly. You know, the know. and, and, and Arizona, know. you're in Arizona, right? Yeah. And they just mandated. You're getting hit. They're a mask in public. And you know, it, uh, a lot of people are uh, are falling hook, line, sinker. They're willing to just sacrifice their freedoms for whatever level of safety they really can provide themselves through common sense. So just not. Right. I mean, when I go see my 87-year-old father and 83-year-old mom, I- I'm wearing a mask, dude. You know, I'm trying to, listen, if we had done this a little bit differently and didn't shut the whole blessed thing down and, you know, protected those among us that were the most vulnerable and, you know, tried hard to, you know, be careful and wash your hands and all that, most people would be okay. I told my family, there will be some that had no idea, maybe me, that I get it and end up in the hospital. Shoot, I may even die. But... We can't, I don't know. I, I think, what, here's a question. Do you think we're going to shut down again? To the scale that we did the first time? It's hard to say. I say it, no. It really is. I say I, no. I, no way are we going to allow that to happen. <laughs> nope. You know, but a lot of businesses are still closed. A lot of corporations are still closed. Yeah. I'm going to say this at the risk of pissing some people off. Which is After which is perfect. Which is you, man. This is you. You go for it, because this is what we love about you. Go ahead. A lot of the people who have corona, or or have been diagnosed with corona, also have something else. Um, the it's no different than getting, let's say, uh, hmm, I want to say this carefully. If you get the flu and you already got, let's say another ailment your your chances of getting over that ailment become more difficult because now you're battling a flu i know people on this internet 
and they know people and nobody knows anybody that actually has it by itself. <laughs> okay. The only people I'm hearing about dying mm. is from the idiot box called the television. Mm. Mm. Now, I'm Can, just... I, I have several people that have it that I know personally itself. that are friend by itself. A lot of them are high risk, like in the medical community. It mm -hmm. spread. Now my son's best friend and his father. And so wow. I do. Okay. So, but I don't want to disagree with you. I think it's called uh, comorbidity. Okay. Comorbidity. If you've got diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension, if you've got uh, type 1, you know, whatever, uh, if you're obese, you are highly susceptible of dying if you get it. And what really caused your death? Well, I have to say it's the other ailments first, because if you had those other ailments and you just got the common flu, you could die. It's gonna make it's gonna it's flu gonna mess kill you. you. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Or or you're um, older. If my 87 year old father so, gets the flu and it turns into uh, pneumonia, he's probably gonna die. Yes. Um. But chances are, if he yes, I, I agree there. I'm so, just. So I'm there's thinking, risk factors. I guess yes. the point is it's hard to know um, what is really causing these numbers. And I, I agree with you. I and totally that leads do. me to where I want to just, mm -hmm. because I just want to end this subject with saying this. Sure. Is my prediction that after the election, COVID will be a thing of the past. When we hear about COVID, it'll be as, as, as in past tense. It, that is my firm belief. I hope you're right. I hope so too. I really do. You know, can I transition what you're saying there around this comorbidity thing, you know, to back to the economic piece? Because I, I really, that's where I focus most of my uh, my channel on YouTube too, is macro and, and, and stacking prepping. But we, as a nation, have a comorbidity and it's called debt. We are so debt saturated in our society we live way beyond our means and i think the chickens are coming home to roost so that when we had this medical thing whatever you want to call it right right and and the the the, the bubble gets pricked we are not in the 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 right economic state to be able to withstand we don't have the savings we can't get through a period of time you know without income we have a pile of debt. I compared recently to what happened to Japan back in the lost decades uh, of the uh, of the 90s. The thing that helped them is that they had low debt and high savings, the Japanese. We don't have that. We live in a way that puts us at high risk of being mm -hmm. killed economically. And 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 that is that is such troubling fact. I again, I've talked to my parents. They're like you guys don't get it. We came through the De Great Depression. We knew how to save. We knew how to have a garden. We knew how to live within our means, actually below their means. Proud of them for doing that. They had good economic sense. We've lost our sense. We're, we're freaking mindless when it comes to uh, right. uh, that's fiscal all responsibility. It's all driven. That, 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 that craving for more and more and more, outdoing your neighbors, metaphorically. Yes. Yep. It all comes from television. It all comes... Uh, from the news media outlets and, mm -hmm. and the and all these uh, these these shows on television, right? Uh, they, you know, they make you jealous. Yes, envious. You envious. Know, you, That's better. Envious. Yeah. You know, uh, you got to be doing. You got to put on your your best face. You know, you got to wear mm -hmm. the when you go out. You got to be in a, a a car that you really can't afford and clothes that you really can't afford and everybody's doing the same thing trying to outdo each other exactly as a society right uh it it it, it it's, it's comical good. you know and all those people that got laid off due to COVID and still have the mortgage banks will forgive you uh, for a couple of months but mm. about three months they want their home back you know, well, so, I hear um, you, but I'm worried yeah. about I'm worried about what our Federal Reserve is going to do and what our government. Right now, we seem to be in a, a very deflationary uh, state right now. We're worried about deflation, deflation, deflation. Everything is about deflation. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to give way to stagflation soon. I think, and that's back in the 70s, right? We were kids, right? That was when people are out of job, inflation was going up, 
and 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 the economy was struggling the gdp was terrible stagflation mm-hmm. the misery index i don't know if you remember that line yeah. misery, right i think all that's coming back but i think right. the response of our central banks uh, it's going on around in the world i mean we're we're, we're, we're printing money ludicrous speed <laughs> you know, remember uh what was that space balls ludicrous speed you know that's what we're doing when it comes to just printing money it, it, it's scary and you know and then uh-huh. hyperinflation is next, dude. After stagflation, I think comes hyperinflation. Yeah, and it goes back to the prepping. It doesn't happen like a light switch. Right. And you know, one day, what we've been prepping on the shelves is going to come in handy. You know. Yeah, but uh, uh, dude, do we really? We don't want that. I, I, I'm about to drop a video in a couple of weeks called um, uh, "Do You Really Want Silver to Shoot the Moon." And I know you've talked about this on your channel. Be careful what you ask for. Oh yeah, yeah, I want silver to five hundred dollars an ounce. Well, do you realize your milk will probably cost you ninety bucks a gallon when that happens? <laughs> do we really want or, silver? To, do yeah. we really want to use our preps? I don't. Well, you know me. I think <laughs> silver needs to go as far down as possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, sure. If you're an accumulator like us, right, and not a hodler, you want it to go down because you're not done buying, right? <laughs> right. It, it, it's scary. Oh, um, yes, I know. It, it, it really is scary. And uh, I guess I've been very fortunate. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't lose my job or anything. So good. Yeah. But that either. can, you know, that can happen tomorrow. And you know, theory. I want to be sensitive too to those who have. I think. Our right. country has has been one of the most gracious, most giving. We have been historically. We we really do. In fact, a lot of it has been our our, our, our civic um, um, groups, our churches, and stuff has really helped. I help people in a variety of ways directly mm-hmm. um, and charities and so forth. But we are now shifting away from that towards a mentality that says the government takes care of everything. The government from cradle to grave will take care of everything. I can lose my job and I have a right to have the government give me back exactly the same job I have at exactly the print. I, that is a, my right. It's like, whoa, where did that come from, man? I, I don't understand that either. Um, a lot of people, they, they cannot live without a mommy or a daddy. They really can't. They can't. Mm. They can't survive on their own. I always said this. Well, actually, if you go to Yosemite National mm-hmm. Park, some mm-hmm. of your bigger national parks, there are right. signs along the hiking trails. Please do not feed the animals. They will forget how to fend for themselves. And people are no different. I always said help is a t- it in my mind has always been a temporary action. Mm-hmm. A temporary action. Help means somebody assist you. Mm-hmm. What I'm getting at is, if somebody's assisting you, you're also lending a hand. They're not doing it all themselves. Mm-hmm. Then that's not helping. That's them doing it all. Today's society, they can't do it themselves. They, 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 they listen to too many. Uh, uh, television shows that show people driving around and BMWs and all this, you know, these, the, these, uh, these, these television shows that, that just mm. spectacularize their rich or their mm-hmm. well-to-do status. You know, these, mm-hmm. these survivor type of shows when they're living in these nice homes or whatnot. Mm. And they believe that, how come I don't have? I'm I'm 20 years old. Well, I deserve why that. Why don't I drive a Beamer? This I'm being held down by the white man. <laughs> you know that yeah, metaphor. I yeah, I understand. Uh, there, so or still, being held b- held down by the man, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, right? I'm Somebody's being held holding down me by back. Somebody, right? Because I'm 19 or 20. I don't have mm. my mansion. I mm. don't have my Beamer, mm. and I don't. And you deserve it. And and I deserve it. But they don't realize that in real life, your teenage years, and for for that matter, your early 20s, for me, were struggles. They were constantly getting electricity turned off Mm -hmm. because I'm taking this bill to pay that bill. And it it wasn't until my 
my 30s where I'm coming on to, you know, where I came into my own. I got the education. Right. Started getting a little bit of better job. Mm. I, I worked for it. Everything I have around me wasn't accumulated in one week. Where that's where the mindset of our young is. Oh, I know. It, it, I, I, yeah. I, 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 I hire I hire people, and I have some people you know, in my job. I, I have a lot, of, and it's tough to see that. Six years is how I got my stuff. But but to your point. You know, and I don't want to speak bad about millennials because I have one as a as a child, and and Not I hard. hire them, and I love them. I think they 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 give a lot to they provide a lot to our society. Right. They've just been handled. I mean, a lot of the blame and a lot of things go, goes to their parents. Um, but it and is amazing cool. though to feel and the entitlement. It, I've had people that look at me, and I've been here. I've been here six weeks. Why haven't I gotten my promotion yet? I've literally yeah. had people ask me that, you know. and I'm like, oh man, you got to work hard. It takes time, and no, 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 no. I, I need things. I need things fast, well, and I think it. that translates though into people's gambling, if you will, with the markets. They want it now. They don't. They they want to bottom feed on this this the stock market. They they want to play the stock market like a casino, and they want to win and win big fast. Well, we know, we not know invest for over a period are. of time. Hmm? Yeah, we, we know how casinos are. The house always, always wins. wins. Right. The fact of the matter is, you you take this this perception that TV reality is real to these people, and I'm not saying every kid's like that because I don't want to. I'm just saying. There's a lot that expect it yesterday, and they're still 20 years old. And then you, then they're going to school, and they're being taught God knows what in school. Oh, that's half the problem right there. So, th well, between the television, the idiot box is what I call it, and 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 internet and college, they come out thinking, well, I ain't taking no freaking Dude, job that you know. No, yeah. no, no, I need to get my executive job now. I'm ready. I, I got my college degree. Yeah, I, there you go. I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an executive now. I'm laughing here because you and I are so old. They don't watch TV. <laughs> yeah. They watch Netflix. <laughs> they watch the internet, YouTube. <laughs> TV, what are you talking about, you oldie? <laughs> um, it's tough. Yeah, it, it is. And, you know, I both of us, I think, are, are thinking the same thing when it comes to our economy. We need to pray that we're wrong and prepare that we're right. And, and honestly, I think the more we educate people, I get a lot of emails and stuff from people saying, you know what, uh, you know, Yankee, I, I took the money out, the extra out of my bank. I, it's not worth the risk. Or, you know, I started stacking because of you and I know you get it in spades. You get those more than I do. And that just, doesn't that just warm your heart? Doesn't that yeah, just make you jacked? Says that they're, 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 I love that when they say, I, I got rid of some fiat currency and I bought some yep. real money real money yep you know, yeah i got real like, money real money i remember i think you did this you, you like half my stuff is from you man i have to admit you you I pulled out four or five of those you talked about the difference between that silver certificate and the federal right. reserve note you you really but, explained well i think right. what currency so, money you know is. and i'll do it again for your <laughs> your viewers if you were to hold a oh yeah do this a one. silver eagle up i'm looking mm -hmm. um on a silver eagle it shows one dollar. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm, I got silver on both sides. <laughs> yeah. So he, here's one dollar. So yep. it says one dollar. Yeah, right on the back. Yeah. Show the people on your nice camera. God, that's a sharp image. One dollar. Now show them the one dollar bill. This is a one dollar silver certificate. It's one dollar. The difference is. The silver coin, that one dollar, is worth approximately twenty-two dollars now. Amazing. I think it's what twenty-two. Well, could be. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, well, twenty you talk, dollars. Yeah, you're talking the difference between spot, and maybe how much it costs to actually. The premiums are higher, so yeah, in the twenties, you're buying a silver eagle for right. Yeah. So th there's there there's a difference. Another good example was that dime. You you held oh, out yeah. uh, a dime. I like the rosies so, now better than the uh, Mercs. So hold they have up less that dime wear. for a second. Which hold one? up that dime. All right, I'll, I'll go with the Merc for you. All right, hold up the dime. Yep. So that dime, what is it? About a buck ninety? Give, give me, what is the price, market price of that? About a buck ninety, two ten? Yeah, $2. say that. It's two, yep. Yeah. Two dollars and ten cents. Is that what you got? Two ten, right? 
I'm, I'm going to just round it to two dollars. Let's okay. just for because you got so that that thing's really worth about two dollars and ten cents. I mean, we'll just say it's two dollars. Mm -hmm. That that's mm -hmm. right now. There's plenty of gas stations that are selling unleaded yeah. gas for a dollar ninety nine. That ten cents. Yep. Is has has gone up in price mm. the value of that coin has gone up in price that 10 cents can buy a gallon of gas think about that, that i know i actually saw i saw a photo a photo of a uh, a sign saying yeah it's a buck whatever buck 90 or uh, a gallon mm -hmm. or one silver dime a gallon it actually said that right so. and that's why i advocate trading in all your your cash right of uh, your silver and eventually 10, 20 years of owning that silver or that Confederate, uh, not Confederate, the, the junk silver, it, it right. too will appreciate in the 10 or 20 years of you holding it. Check this out. This was done by uh, someone, uh, Silver uh, Silver Dragons. I don't know if you know him, but he's- That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? He pours these. Now these are cool. He actually, I commissioned him to make my my round. I have a bunch of these coming out soon. I, I but. You know what? I don't stack this stuff either. This this is fun. This is this is silver art. This is again right. back to the ice cream cone. This is <laughs> this is the fun stuff that I will get, and I try to get different rounds from you know, around the community because this community. Can I end it on this too, man? Um, the community that we have on YouTube. Again, I think back to the days when I would watch you. Uh, oh man, you're you're one of my future channels on my cha uh, on my channel because of you know watching you and learning there is so much in our community that we can learn but also just just the support that we have within this uh precious metals community on youtube is pretty special community is growing it isn't it is. it is fantastic and i i do i do appreciate it um you know i think it's we've been an hour and 10 minutes going into this uh that's good wow that flew man i want to talk to you about crypto at some point but i think maybe we should do a second second uh, collab maybe talk a little bit all about right that. we could we could d definitely do that we'll uh chat offline about that okay. uh shoot shoot me an email i'm kind of new to cryptos myself right right I, uh so well uh, i i don't do crypto right so we we can basically discuss the uh pros and cons and and how we approach it if that's something you want to do um absolutely oh i do have absolutely. one last question do you ever do you invest, and I do mean the word invest, in any silver or gold mining stocks? No. Nope. Don't do that yet. Okay. That's no. a spec. That's, that's speculative, right? <laughs> I have a four hundred one k at work, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's my only other uh, investment. But you don't leverage. You don't. You can invest with it there as well in your four hundred one k. But you don't do that. Well, with my work, they give you a. Oh, you're limited. Yeah, we're funds. limited okay. to certain funds. Yeah, certain things. Okay. But the only reason why I do that is because my employer matches my full four percent. That's good. That's excellent. So, yeah. And I'm, you know, I'm a hundred percent vested. So it's not like I got to wait for that to to build up. Right. So yeah, I, just I mentioned that. Turn that down. Yeah, I mentioned that early on when we first started that I was maxing out my 401k, but I did move out of my 401k when I changed jobs and got into mm -hmm. a whole different line of investing that's outside of precious metals. That 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 is really the investment uh, vehicle of choice for me now. But I do do a little bit in the uh, silver and gold mining stocks, just a little yeah. bit of my portfolio, not much. It's I think there's huge, huge upside potential for that. Massive. Yeah, the only reason I don't do a lot of stocks is because I'll mm -hmm. be honest with you, I don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. It's not that I don't do it because I think it's a silly move. I just right. don't know much about stocks and yeah. and all. So I stay away from things I don't know about. <laughs> That's good. Fear. That's smart. Yeah, stick with what we know, and we know silver and gold. You, yeah, you know it really well. <laughs> Yeah. Can you have any other? Show me some of your. We'll wrap it up, but I just want to see some some more of your stuff. Oh, look at that bar! Bring it in. <laughs> oh man, that's a ten it. ounce, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's Such my favorite shine. size. Look at the shine on that thing. You can man. brush your teeth with it. <laughs> that I is love nice. Yeah, you like yeah, this. I didn't really. I didn't really bring out much of anything. Uh, 
you know, I just brought out a few uh, tubes. I, I'm not like you. I don't, it looks like you have a well, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 tubes of just oh. silver eagles. Oh yeah. That's my monster. That, that's, that is actually 26 tubes. Oh, and, yeah, and you got all that gold there, so you're doing good. You're I'm doing trying pretty. hard. I think I don't I have a lot of time. So, you know, again, a lot of it, though, is choices. Instead of buying things and instead of, you know, I'm 54, right? So I'm mm -hmm. an old guy. So I've built my wealth over decades, and I'm trying to preserve it. You know, right? I'm still investing in areas like private mortgage lending and all that kind of stuff that it gives me a yield that return on investment each mm -hmm. month. But this stuff is just, we are going to see inflation go through the roof soon, I think. I really do. Well, I hope it doesn't happen, but all signs are point, pointing to it. Um, I can't wait to the election. Mm. I can't wait to that's past us. And I'm, I'm afraid of what's on the other side. I'm a little scared of what's on the other side of that election, but yes, I, it would be nice to get through it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, but other than that, we've got uh, interesting times ahead of us. So, yes. yes. Well, I appreciate this more than I can adequately express, man. Another overtax taxpayer, you're the man. I'm going to put your. Uh, uh, a link <laughs> in the description of this video. I will let you uh, have it too. If there's anybody out there watching who has not subscribed to another overtax taxpayer, you're living under a rock because this guy rocks. <laughs> he really does. So definitely check him out. Thanks, man. Thank I, you so much. Really, this was a lot of fun.